The diagnosis is almost never made by a specialist. It is always made by a primary care physician. So we really want primary care providers to be aware of the disease and screen the appropriate patients. And that includes uh, baby boomers, people born between 1945 and 1965. Uh, it includes anyone with a history of drug use, current or past, people who have been in prison, uh, people who got blood transfusions before 1992. And then anyone who has chronically elevated liver tests should be screened for hepatitis C. So there are more patients that need to be treated than there are specialists to treat them. The time, there was a time when the treatment required a very complicated treatment regimen of interferon, which was very difficult for patients to tolerate. With the onset of the, what we call the DAA era, the direct acting antiviral area, treatment has become much safer, much easier, and much more effective. So we are now in an era where we expect to cure about 95 to 99 percent of all patients. Many of these patients have had the virus for a long time. The uh, infection is definitely associated with worse outcomes. And many times those people really can't get to a specialist. Number one, there aren't enough specialists. Number two, the costs of going to a specialist are maybe prohibitive. Uh, and the inconvenience factor of having to find a specialist are really significant. So with all of those factors in mind, we are very interested in coaching primary care providers to treat hepatitis C. Today I spoke about Project ECHO. Project ECHO stands for Extension for Community Health Outcomes. We're very interested in teaching primary care providers to assess and manage these patients. Uh, the way they do that is we provide them a template so they know what to look for in their patients. They do a presentation, usually to me and my associate director. Sometimes we have a panel of other experts available. Uh, and we talk about the case. They, they present, they say these are the features. We ask them questions to try to get them to think about how you would manage those and what obstacles you might find. Uh, and then come to an, uh, to an agreement about the kind of therapy that's needed. The amazing thing is that after people have done this for just a few episodes, they become so good at doing it that they're teaching us because we're interested in what are the community barriers, you know, what kind of problems do people face, and so we've learned as much from our audience as they've learned from us. Um, one of the things we talk about less is that we build this online community of providers that get together regularly, see each other on video, uh, and share experiences. And so if you live in a remote area where you don't see a lot of people, a lot of other providers that have a similar interest, here you have a built-in a community to talk to uh, and to solve problems together. It's sort of like Facebook for providers.